Hey there YouTube. It's time. Finally got the courage up to start weathering the cruiser body. See I've got the interior stripped out. Depending on how this goes may have to do a separate video for the interior weathering. So it looks like I'm going to have to take a good bit of it apart just to be able to get down in there with with the uh, weathering brushes and things like that. So, we'll get started. Alright, so we're going to do this very similar to how we did the Land Rover back there. I'm going to start with my tester's earth colored paint marker. I still haven't driven this yet, but I've already got a few scratches around the fenders. And I'm going to just highlight some areas where rust would commonly be. And then we'll brush on our Vallejo pigment burnt umber powder. Oh, I need uh, styrene here. Make sure we get it good and wet. coverage on there. Right, let's find us another spot. We should do a little down here on the running board. Just making this up as we go. Nothing uh, nothing set in stone. When we get to the other steps we can hide some of this and blend it better. Leave some of that powder just laying around. Uh, let's do a little bit on the rear quarter here. The paint didn't want to stay on there. down here. It's always good to have something down because this is messy. Alright, let's take a look around the other side. Alright, so I went ahead and did the driver's side. Uh, I just hit that hinge a little bit and leave that powder on there for a bit till the paint dries. I did go ahead and brush some of the powder. I've got a little bit down there as well, but just brushing that over the paint automatically adds a little faded rusty tint to it. And try that before we do the rust all wet rust finish see if we can add a little little bit more depth to it just hit some spots with it I just try new things trying to really don't want to screw this one up because I like this one a lot but we'll see how it turns out I'm gonna turn around here and do some on the back all right on the back here I did all of the hinges and including the latch in the middle and I, I just hit a little bit around the spare tire mount, just brushing it straight down. Hopefully that'll come out like, you know, rust running down the paint, staining the, the paint over time. Got it in the uh, cracks of the doors a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure how far I'm going to take this one. I, if you watched my last video on the D110, I ran out of the black wash. And all I had, I thought I had some little testers black paint turned out to be a flat rubber finish, which gave a really neat effect. But this being such a lighter color, I'm, I'm a little afraid to try that. I may water that down a little bit more, but we'll worry about that when we get to that step. All right, so I did come back around and hit the door hinges on the passenger side. I think I'm going to go ahead and do all the hinges just for continuity. We'll see. Uh, see how that turns out and if you get it like that I just dabbed it in don't worry about it just cover it up with rust and we'll cross that road when we get to the end and see what how it looks and all this excess powder I keep knocking off onto my towel here I can kind of dab some of it back up with the brush if I need it so it's not totally wasted I guess if you really wanted to you could uh, 
I can shake this stuff off into something and try to recollect it. But uh, not that worried about it right now. I haven't run out of this of these pigments and I've had them for a long time, so they seem to go pretty far. I'm just gonna go ahead and get in that fender. Wrap the cowl down. Again, I didn't really have any plan on where to start with this. I'm just making it up as we go. And hit this side. I got a little too much in that vent. Ooh, it's all over the shop now. I think I'm going to hit those windshield hinges as well. Oh, I just almost dipped my paint marker in the pigment. I don't know how that would turn out. It's going to do a little bit there. I'm not going to overdo it. I can always come back and add more, but... Just remember... Hinges rust. You always see rusty hinges on Jeeps and stuff. So... Just get all this rusted up here. I think I can get a little on the wiper arms. Looks pretty good. Door sides again. Alright, we'll let that dry. Start thinking about the next step. Alright, so I was just dusting down the front here with the powders. It looks pretty good. It's just kind of dulling the paint slightly. It's not permanent. I mean, you can rub it off with your finger. But some of it will stay once we start the, uh, the rust all. But I had a little, another one of those happy accidents on the grill here. That flat white paint that I used on the chrome really uh, stayed on that white paint. So I think I'm going to hit all of this just a little. Add a little bit of, of weathered effect to it. I accidentally got it on that one part and I was trying to rust that little spot there. If I can get enough of this off the blanket here. The towel. There's a good spot. I don't want to go too crazy with the with the grill. I like how stark white it was, but that that's kind of a natural dingy finish and that, that ain't coming off. That's not like you can wipe it off the blue paint or the turquoise. That stuff's on there a good bit better. Get it in the edge all the way around. Go ahead and hit the emblem too over there. Try to stay away from that with the rust all because that thing will take paint very, very well. So I don't want that rust all just to completely turn it orange. But that is giving us a really good effect here. Another one of those accidents. So I'm liking that. I'm going to mess around with the powders here a bit more and then we'll start on the rust all. Alright, so I've gone over the whole thing with the dry brush and the burnt umber. You can see there's a lot of extra dust on there, but it's it's this is a satin finish paint that I use and it seems to be taken to that pretty well. I and mean, you can still wipe wipe it off but it's it's on there. It looks somewhat natural. So I'm just gonna rock with that for now. And we're gonna start up with the rust all here and see what happens when we mix the two. Alright, so I've started the rust all. Just hitting the areas that I think should have rust running down from them. Gas door, door handle, mirrors, hinges, marker lights. Uh, yeah, just going playing by ear here. I don't really know how this is going to turn out. I'm just hitting spots and hoping for the best. If it starts looking too bad, I'll wipe it off before it completely dries. I've got all the fans on in here. I'm run down there. A little bit up here. And turn it around. Get this side of the hinges. Get it nice and runny so I can flow it will there we go and 
again, I don't really know what I'm doing, so just hoping for the best. I know the rust all takes to chrome pretty well, so I'm trying to hit the marker lights and the door handles <clears throat> pretty good with it. Let's do a little more right there. Oh, Lord, I got a bunch down there. All right, let's spin it around. Got all the fans turned on now. Help dry this stuff up. Let me get some on the uh, spare tire mount here. It'd be cool if it looked like it was rusting. Uh, what I've learned with this stuff, it, it looks really, really, like, that bottom down there is just completely orange. But once it dries, it's going to be so faint. It, it takes several coats to get, get it to stay looking as thick as it does right now. So, try not to be afraid of it. <clears throat> it's easy to look at it and be like, oh no, I've just messed up everything. It, it's really not, not quite as serious as it looks. <clears throat> and see over here where it's dry, it doesn't even look orange. Go ahead and hit some of these spots again here. Uh, I see that one on the hood. <clears throat> uh, wipe some of that out of there. Try to take it slow. Keep spinning it around here so my fan will dry it. <clears throat> so I guess this isn't the most important step. To me, the most important step is the black wash because that's what gets in all your, your vents and it shows the detail a lot more. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of water to this because it was pretty thick when we did the land rover back there but it's still liquidy so I might hit a little bit more water in that just so we can take it slow on this lighter color I don't want to ruin it with the first first pass I did almost forget about the roof need to get that caught up here and put that with some rust all not exactly sure where this would rust from just gonna hit some of the High points here. Look like the windows are resting out. I guess we'll just hit it all over. I got it on the main window. <clears throat> we get that quick because it will dry up. Now we might do something to, to age the windows here later, but. Right now, I don't want them orange. I might hit them with a Scotch Brite or something, just kind of kind of dull them a little bit. You don't want it to look brand new. The rest of it ain't gonna look brand new. As far as the white top, I'm not sure what I want to do with that yet. I didn't do much on the on the Land Rover. I did hit it with the, the super flat at the end, and I did get a little rust on it around the edges, but uh, I really don't want to hit it with all this because I think it's just going to look tacky. It's going to look way too overdone. So we'll just maybe get a little bit on the edges, and we'll, we'll flatten it out with the third step of the process here. Might, uh, actually... I do a little on the underside here. Those uh, overhangs on the roof might rust a little bit, and it makes sense. doesn't help I haven't cleaned this shirt I've been using for years. 
Since I first started with the powders, it's been pretty nasty. All right, that's good enough. We got a little, little, little bit. It'll be hard to see on the camera. We'll let that dry. We'll get the body back in there. Have a look where we're where we're at. Um, I think I'm gonna go over more of it with the rust all. <clears throat> I'm not gonna have that nice uh, blue nose piece on the hood there, and then rust coming from the windshield latches. Play a dangerous game down here with the uh, grill. I don't want to get too much in there or on it. Get that powder off. I made a mess with that powder. Looking back now, I probably wouldn't have used so much powder. It looked good. That's why I just kept on with it. But now. We're starting to get, I mean, it's going to help with the rust because it's getting mixed in with the rust all. So I guess it, we'll see how it turns out. It might not be such a bad thing after all. But uh, it's it's starting to clump up a little bit with our, our rust all. So it might give us a neat effect. We'll just have to see. Getting these vents, these fins on the hood. And with this rust all, we, it takes quite a Quite a while to dry, so we can wipe it down if it uh, starts looking bad. Don't forget about your about your window frame either. This is important. You don't want to have that perfectly clean. The rest of it looks all crappy. Just hit it a little bit here and there. Up the doors too. <clears throat> Just finger ring on this side. Go ahead and hit those marker lights to see what happens when it dries. I just did those in a flat black. And on this side here. Pull it up the top too, because I've got a feeling I'll be driving this with the top off a lot more than with the top on. Mainly because I just don't want to have to take the body off and screw the top back down. I think it would work better. Just having it where I can take it on and off for looks plus that interior is so nice I hate to hate to hide it but I don't know all the memories I have growing up ours had the top on it they, they did have it removed and had a soft top made for it but I don't know most of what I remember was the hard top those round back windows I was sitting in there sideways I'm gonna go ahead and hit up here to these areas you're gonna see Now, it's good to have everything done, like, I've got the emblems on, I've got the lights on. I, it, I always like to do that before I do any weathering, that way everything's even, everything matches. It looks like it's been there on the car or truck for the same amount of time as all the rest of it. You don't want to have nice shiny chrome door handles and blinker lights on something that's, you know, rusted out. This wouldn't make sense. So you gotta make it look, that looks pretty good. Looks pretty bad, but it looks pretty good. It's setting, you can see where it ran down earlier on our first coat. It runs down from mirrors and gas door, and now we're just kind of giving it a ugly final coat. Let's go ahead and hit everything again. Oh, I've done one on the emblems on the back though. Try not to do too much on those because they're white. But I can wipe that down here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and hit this aluminum bracket. I don't know what it's going to do, but we'll see. And make sure and get up behind it. Because if it's going to rust, it's going to be up in there behind it. This is the fun part when you just start not caring. You're just like, alright, just cover this thing. Let's get it done. I don't know what's going to happen now, so let's just go with the flow. Get the insides of my doors. All the stuff you can see. Uh, I'm not sure how much of the windshield post you can see. I'm going to go ahead and hit that a little bit. 
just in case. I think that's all covered. It does look like I'm going to have to start ordering some more rust all before long. It's not going quite as far as, uh, well, it's, yeah, I guess it's gone pretty far. I've done three Hiluxes, and then the only one I've really done right is the Land Rover back there. That was the one that got serious about. Alright. I've got a bug in here. I don't do anything to make it look too abnormal. Only really big dry spot. Just make sure we get it get even even muck. I'm just making up words. Eh? All right, so I'm gonna swap that out for the top again. We'll give it a second coat. And again, we'll try not to get it all over the top, the very top. And probably will hit a little bit more of the inside edge here. Because you can't see that from inside, so we'll make it match. Painted it, I might as well weather it. Ooh, it's running all under the windows, that's great. This may have been a really bad idea, we'll see. Go ahead and hit our sides again. It's looking really good on this top. I, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up so you don't have to sit here and watch me break. All right, we're still waiting on the rust all step one to dry. Just wanted to show a little bit of what we got so far. This thing is looking rough. I think it's I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. We've got a good base. Probably needs another no uh it'll over another fifteen minutes or so to dry up. I got fans on it. Uh, I did see I need missed that spot. I'll hit that here real quick. <clears throat> but uh, I'm gonna let it dry. I did go ahead and grab another clean dirty t-shirt because I really need to control how much of this black wash we're using this time and I don't need any excess anything going on with it so I'm gonna hit that one spot we'll let it dry and we'll pick up at the black wash and a little update uh, foolishly or maybe wisely realized the wheels weren't gonna look right with this body so I went ahead and started trying to weather them a little bit I hit them with the rust We'll let that dry and see what happens. We'll flip it around to the other side. Uh, I was mentioned in another video. I tried to start with the dull coat on some RC four-wheel drive beadlock wheels, and it did not come out at all very well. It's just where I mean, it's just random flat spots. It doesn't really look weathered. But these being G-made wheels, a different finish. We'll see how it works. I mean, hope it does work. Alright, so it looks like all the rust all is about dry. It's time for the black wash. I did water this down just a little bit more. This is our, I'll show you. One of these little testers paints. Comes in a little set of, uh, I think it was like a military set. This is flat. No, that ain't it. That's flat black. That's what I was looking for when I used the wrong one. Yeah, flat rubber. Got this at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. I, was, I think it was when I was detailing the driver for my other Hilux back there. So that's what we've added in. It was already 
the black wash, I was running low. Poured in about half that container <clears throat> and added some water. So now, let me get this mess out of the way. Let's get our clean shirt up here and let's dive in. Hope for the best. I'm going to start up around the uh, windshield here. Try to get down in this vent. Get the hinges. This, oh, I may have watered it down too much. Yeah, it looks like I did. It's back to where we started. Let me try to shake it up again here. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna have to add some more to that. Hold on. All right, a quick update. This is not working quite as well as it did on the the uh, Land Rover there. Apparently the paint dried up inside. So I've got the front done. It's taking a lot more work and if I wipe it too soon it strips it down to perfectly clean blue paint. So this is going to be slow and tedious and it's going to be a lot more heavy than I intended to do. So we're just going to, have to play it by ear here. I'm running low on this stuff again. I'm going to try to mix up some more. But I'll keep you posted. Alright, another update. Finally learning how to work this. The uh, brown black wash finish. The uh, paint and the water have separated. And the paint has started to dry on the inside of the container. So, you scrape the inside of the container. And you get some of the jelly paint out. And you can rub that into your cracks and body lines. And then you smear the regular black wash around. I finally figured out how to work it. Now that I've got a coat all the way around. So if you really lay the brush into the finish, then you start to get the, the dirty marks and stuff on the body. And if you just rub it lightly, then it just leaves the normal black wash. So uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit more on the back side now that I know kind of how to, how to use it better. So I'll go ahead and knock that out right quick all right what a mess so finally figured out how to work with this stuff just gotta let it all dry now it's like you just smear the light black and then if you really mash the brush down the brown which would mark up and streak and get in the, in the cracks and such so this is what we got so far mm get the glare off there for you. It's heavy, heavy weather. Way, way worse than I meant to do. And all we can do now is see how it looks once we uh, get the flat, super flat finish on it. So, get that ready next and let this dry for a bit. Alright, ready for the final step. Do the ultra flat, super flat, whatever they call it. This thing is grungy. You can see very well, but it's pretty nasty. It looks like it's been sitting out under under some trees for a decade or so. So I'm gonna start gonna dull it down a little bit. I don't know if my brush is clean enough or not yet. Put it through some thinner. That brown wash is just so soupy. It's like smearing Elmer's glue all over everything. <clears throat> I'm gonna start up here in the front. Just move it down. I won't make you watch all this. I'll go ahead and do one coat and come back. All right, we got the first coat of super flat on and drying. Move the camera here, trying to get a little bit better lighting on it so you can just see how grungy it really is. This thing looks like it's been through hell. I did hit the entire roof 
with uh, super flat it's probably going to need another coat but it, it you can see this stuff's not exactly white anymore it did have a white finish now brushing all this and dipping it and brushing and dipping it this has turned a little bit so I'm hoping it'll bring out a little bit of uh, add a little color to the to the flat finish on the roof have to wait and see once it dries after another coat. Oh, this was nerve wracking. This thing it didn't didn't work quite as well as it did on the on the uh, Range Rover back there. But I think it came out came out pretty good. The thing it it looks natural. It looks like one that I, I see down the road here from us. It's been sitting under an oak tree for probably 20 years. Now I gotta figure out uh, how we're gonna go about doing the interior. That's gonna be a challenge. I might have to strip it completely apart, take the door panels out, do the floorboards and roll bar. It's gonna be some work. That'll have to be another video. Right now, I think this is my fourth hour of, of this weathering on here. But I'm gonna go ahead and add another coat, start working my way around with the super flat. We'll get some finished shots here at the end. Another thing I just tried worked all right. I was doing the super flat on the roof. I hope this is going to come out. And I decided to wet sand with, I think this is like two or three thousand grit block here, and uh, kind of wore down a couple of the edges. I added a little bit of the rust from the rust all, sanded it down. It had a little bit of a stain to it. Not too bad. You can see some some edges coming through. I think I'm going to stop with that for now. I don't want to overdo that because then I'll end up having to repaint the roof. That's that's a lot of trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and let this finish dry, and then we'll put put it on some put it on chassis and see what we what we look like. Here she is. Minus the interior, uh, I do have the one coat of rust on the wheels. It doesn't look bad. It needs something a little bit darker on it as well. Got to do something about this nice, shiny, clean bumper out here on the front. And that's going to be a new thing for me because I've not, never done any of the chassis. So I'm going to have to do some research on that. But, uh, man, that was a lot of work. Let me zoom in here and show you some of the uh, detail. It's just nasty. I'm really happy these rear corner lights came out super, super rusty. The chrome just aged perfectly. It's hard to see with that direct light on it, but it's pretty even all the way around. Doesn't look quite as a uh, turquoise now. It looks a little bit more blue like the one I grew up with. And you can see back here where the uh, rust we applied at the beginning really looks looks pretty legit. You can see the rundowns from the fuel fuel door and the hinges. Zoom in on these hinges. Let's see some of the detail. It really is a lot darker than it looks. This light on here is really harsh. But that's it for now. The interior is going to be a lot of work. we got to do some more with those wheels and that frame. So there will probably be a few more videos before we finish this one up. It's just, there's a lot to do. But uh, I've got a slideshow coming up of some finished shots of it. Thanks for watching. Hope uh, if you have any questions or anything, or anybody's got any ideas you want to share, or tell me you hate it, or whatever, just post comments below. And uh, as always, please share and thumbs up. And thank you for watching.